So, well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to sunny Rudbelin here at Hope Church. We're uh, celebrating in so many ways, aren't we, Mr. Murray? And uh, we're going to have a fantastic time together. And uh, just to say, the plan today is we're going to start with John Heather leading us into some worship, which will be really fun. I do love it when they lead worship. It, it does me good. And then Andrew Thomas is going to continue on the names of God. So let's just pray and then we'll go for it. Father, I thank you so much, Lord, that it's sunny outside. It mm. makes such a difference. And Lord, just be able to get out and, and in, enjoy the open air. And Lord, I just pray, Father, that today, and uh, th this time together, will just do us good in your awesome name. Amen. 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 Over to you too. Oh, uh, is that working? Sweet. Great. So yeah, afternoon, everyone. We're just going to launch straight into some worship uh, and I'll, yeah, I'll do a very quick prayer, but then we'll go. So Father, we just ask that you would meet with us as we sing your praises, as we lift your name, as we proclaim your holiness in this first song. Uh, remind us of how holy you are and how awesome you are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah. 
Let your blood, King Jesus. Thank you, John and Heather. That was brilliant. There you are. I finally, after a year of doing this, I remember to unmute us. <laughs> yes. I just, um, just before we move on, uh, this week we were looking at Psalm 35 in, in the Bible study. And it's a, a strange psalm because in some ways it's a psalm of David crying out, God, why aren't you speaking to me? Where are you? Why? I, why is everyone having a go at me? Where are you? Where are you? And, yeah, and there's lots of ahas in it. And, and it, but it is, it's this, it's interesting because it's called, titled, Great is the Lord. But it doesn't actually mention Great is the Lord till right at the end. And this is what it says. Great is the Lord who delights in the welfare of his servant. Then my tongue shall tell of your righteousness and the praise all day long. And it's funny, just as we're worshipping then, I, I was reminded of that. And just this moment of how for David, he was just desperate to hear God and feeling like God wasn't listening. God wasn't there. And then suddenly at the end of it, he says, actually, you're interested in the welfare of your servants. Mm. And I just wanted to encourage us today. God is interested in your welfare. Whether you're watching online or whether you're in the Zoom, God is interested in your welfare and wants the best for you. And I was involved in another thing this week, which was talking about how we need to be people who keep reconnecting with Jesus. And I don't know about you, but during the season, you can have moments where you're just getting on. You, you almost just go into survival mode. You know, it's just like, just got to survive. Just got to get through this. Got to get through this. And actually, there's that moment of thinking, I need to lift my head and, and reconnect with Jesus. And I just felt as we were worshipping then that God's saying actually for us as a church, not that we've lost contact with Jesus, it's not that we haven't, aren't connected, but we need to reconnect in a whole new way and reconnect for the next season so that more people can know the welfare that our God is looking after them. And, and for each of us, with what you're going through now, this week, that we connect with Jesus. And so just, I just want to pray, if you know, actually, do you know what, I really do need to reconnect, just just lift your hand. If you know, actually, I, I need to reconnect. I just need to reconnect to his love. I reconnect to him, and his worship. And Holy Spirit, I want to pray right now that you just come and move upon us. Mm. Lord, thank you. Lord, there may be seasons in our life where we feel like, God, you seem silent. But thank you when you speak. Oh, it's so powerful and beautiful. And Lord, I thank you. Your heart and your passion is for us, your church. And so, Lord, I pray today, encourage us. Mm -hmm. I pray for each person that you'd encourage us and build us up to connect with you in a whole new way. I pray this week, Lord, for moments where suddenly it feels like I've reconnected with Jesus. I just, my love for him has increased again. My, I, I just get it. I, I, oh, I'm excited again. The passion for him. He's become my all. So everything else has fallen into place because I put him central. Lord, I just pray for that in your wonderful name. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to do some notices. I'll do some notices now. I just because uh, there, there aren't really many. You've kind of got the hang of them by now. It's Zoom groups midweek, Tuesday, Wednesdays, Bible study on Friday. And the plan is on Good Friday evening, we're going to do a quiz night. Yay! Do you remember those? We did a lot of them at the start when we all had energy for Zoom. Woo! Uh, but actually, we thought Good Friday would be really great to do something. So, John and Heather. I believe I'm now going to quickly flip through to look that they're not looking <laughs> totally shocked and horrified. Are planning on yeah. doing something in that way. Also, just because I haven't interrupted Andrew in a while on notices, um, <laughs> don't forget that I think it's next Sunday the New Wine Cymru prayer for call for prayer thing. Well, prayer for Wales. Yeah, is prayer for Wales. Sunday? Yes. Yeah. Yep. So everybody can join in with that if they want to. Yeah. That would be really good. Mm. So we'll we'll make a thing of that. I've suddenly just discovered I've been asked to host a room in that. <laughs> Text just came through. Oh, joy. So <laughs> that would be great. Anyway, on that note, I've been really enjoying this series looking at um, that whole ongoing theme of the names of God. And I'm 
now going to bring Mr. Thomas up alongside me. Kath has made a dart for it somewhere. <laughs> and uh, you need to unmute yourself, Andrew. Otherwise, it could be a, a sermon in mine. Lord, I want to pray for Andrew right now. I pray, okay. God, you just encourage him. Thank you, Lord. He's still got some voice after yesterday watching that match. And Lord, I pray, Father, what he brings now will just bring your presence in your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Andrew. Yes, I just must admit, my um, my heart goes about 180 beats faster on uh, on uh, International Day when I'm watching Wales. I don't know why that is, but it brings out the worst in me, I think. Um, we're going to be following on uh, today on our series on the names of God. I'm going to be doing Yahweh, excuse the pronunciation, but Sid Kenu, possibly. That's what I read. Sounds all right. Um, and it's the Lord, our righteousness. Um, and I'm going to be, in a minute, I'm going to be reading from two bits of scripture, Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6, and Colossians 2, verse 6 to 9. Um, but first of all, I just want to say that um, I'm not being boastful here, but I am just super spiritual. I got to say, I'm probably one of the most spiritual people you're ever likely to meet. More spiritual than anybody I can think of. Um, I'm just amazing, quite frankly. Um, I just give so much to God, give so much to the Lord. The gifts I possess, well, I, don't, I can't even count them myself, to be honest. Um, I'm spending nearly all my time at the moment on Zoom meetings to absolute giants of faith. Everybody you can think of, both in this country and abroad, absolute giants. They all want to speak to me. I don't know why that is. And I've had so many important uh, positions in the church, different churches. I've done it all. And as you probably all uh, know who know me, um, that is a load of fabrication, a complete pack of lies. But it's just to emphasize that we can't ex succeed by attaching ourselves to the wrong source. Um, I'm Andrew. I'm one of the leaders in Hope Church. And I'm not any of those things. And I'm now just going to read from Jeremiah 23, 5 to 6. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. In one of the translations I read, it said at the end, this is the name they'll give him, God who puts everything right. And the definition of righteousness in human standards, it is the quality of being morally true or justifiable. But in spiritual meaning, is being right in the eyes of God, in our character, our conscience, and our conduct. I just want to tell you a little story um, that I came across. Two farmers who owned racing stables um, up in West Wales had a really, really big rivalry, you know, like, like some people do. Um, and they owned um, racehorses. And they decided when they both would enter the racehorses in, in the same race. And the one farmer thought, you know, he's, he's had the better of me for some time. I know how, how I'll get the better of him. I'll hire a top-class jockey, and we, I'm bound to win them. My horse is about as good as his, but if I got a top-class jockey, he's bound to win. So he did that, and both these horses were in this race. They were um, coming to the final fence, and they were well clear the rest of the field. And as the jockeys jumped the fence and the horses came over the other side, both the jockeys fell off. Well, the top class jockey, because he was a top class jockey and fairly clever, he thought, if I jump back up and jump on the horse, I could win this. So he did that. He jumped back up and he rode away. He won by about six, seven lengths. He was well clear of the field. And he, as he crossed the line, he put his hand up and cheered. Yes, I've won. I've won for the farmer. And as he came round to the paddock, he was really big, um, beaming face, so happy. And he could see the farmer in the distance. He had, he had won the race for it. And he, his face was fuming. He was really angry. So he came up and he said, what's wrong? He said, I just won you loads of money. I just won a race. I've beaten your, your farmer's friend. And he said, yeah, you beat the farmer's friend, but on my, on my farmer's friend's horse. In his, in his anxiety to win the race, he got back on the wrong horse. And it sort of emphasizes that we shouldn't really base our success on... No one's... <laughs> <laughs> Cass says no one's laughing. 
can you ever laugh? No. We can't hear the laughter. <laughs> yeah, hands up if you're laughing. Hey, good. Um, we it's, it says in the Bible we to run the race marked out for us, but there's no good running the race if we're not running to the source that we need to be running to, which is Jesus. In the beginning of um, Jeremiah, it talks about the righteous ruler. No one since Adam had lived sinless lives, but then there came a righteous ruler. If we or the world could be saved through human kindness or clear thinking, Jesus would have either come and formed a sensitivity group or urged us to share our feelings and go to school and have discussions. But that wasn't the way. He knew the ways of God. He knew the ways of the world, the persistence we had of human sin. He took up the cross and called his disciples and gathered up his church. And ultimately, we, we are all sinless. The people in um, Bible times, in Jesus times, they were all sinless. But a ruler came who, who lived right. No one had completely done this before, but God promised that someone would and will. And he was righteous, a righteous ruler. Before God, before man, he was wise and he was righteous. In, the set, in a little bit on in Jeremiah, it talks about a restored life. As great as the deliverance of Israel from Egypt was, this ruler's deliverance will be even greater. Jesus' deliverance is amen forever. It is to be, to be. Someone like myself can go to heaven without health, without wealth, without honors, without learning, without friends. But I can never go to heaven without Christ. Just going to read now from 2 Colossians 6 to 9. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See into it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells boldly. Bodily, excuse me. In Colossians, right at the start, it emphasizes that Jesus is not just the starting point of righteousness, but he also is the continual flow of it. It's an ongoing process. We cannot be righteous without Christ. Only his robes, his royal robes of righteousness, are large enough to cover my and your filthy rags. The blood that Christ shed on the cross was big enough to cover all our sins, mine and everybody else's. We must depend on Christ to keep us in the right standing before God. He is our constant source of righteousness. It's not just a one-off thing. It's like spiritual gifts. It's like he's asking God to fill us spiritually. It's an overflowing thing. It's like a cup that fills up. And when it fills up, it doesn't just suddenly stop. It overflows. Christ's garments of righteousness we wear, not our own. It'd be like an example. It'd be like wearing an expensive coat. It'd be like um, uh, a, a lady who decided to wear a mink coat. Notice how she acts like royalty, like the rich. She wouldn't wear a mink coat and go around wearing a onesie underneath, would she? She'd, she'd sort of don herself up a little bit, put on a little bit of makeup, do her hair. Joseph wore a coat of many colours. And his brethren became mad and jealous. It was a coat his father had given him, and it caused great jealousy. But it was instrumental in God's plan for Joseph. The coat changed Joseph's life. So should the coat of Christ, uh, righteousness, change ours. God wants us to clothe us with, with righteousness. In Colossians, it sort of emphasizes about rejecting lies as well. It talks about the don't be captive by the philo philosophy and empty deceit. The world judges goodness by what it sets up as the standards of goodness. Philosophies change, not only from generation to generation, but on, on, almost on a daily basis now. We hear nowadays of um, how we should behave, how history has to change because of what has happened in the past. Unfortunately, we can't change history. We can act differently now, and we should. Traditions are empty uh, uh, of giving us satisfaction. God's People are righteous, cannot and must not be determined by the world standards. We cannot judge ourselves by the word standards, but we must judge ourselves by Christ and his word, by what it 
talks about in his word. We, are to, we should reject the world's thinking and standards that don't line up with Christ's word. And we should, uh, to our best of our ability, um, live a righteous life. Heaven doesn't go by favor. It goes by the fact that God died for us, that he um, was up on that cross. If it went by merit, I wouldn't be in. I'm sure we could all, many of us could say the same. In Christ, we have it all. All the righteousness we need, we have in Christ. There's a difference between religion and salvation. Religion is man trying to do something for God. Salvation is God who did something for man. I was reading a little bit about righteousness, and it, um, I come across a section of what it talks about in the Quran, the repeated promises of the Quran of the forgiveness of a compassionate and merciful Allah are all made up to the people whose merits have been weighed in Allah's scales. Whereas the gospel of good news is a mercy that is undeserving. It's not a measure that is measured um, through scales, but it is, from, is measured by what God has done for us on the cross. Unlike other religions that require you to earn righteousness, we receive ours as a gift. And what an amazing gift it is. I must admit, I have received some amazing gifts in my life, but it, no, no more so than the gift of um, salvation. Jesus paid the ultimate price for us and for our righteousness. Towards the end of uh, Colossians 2, it talks about the laws of the Old Testament um, and the practices, the temple, the sacrifices, the festivals. But don't worry about others making you believe they're most righteous, that they're more righteous than you. Like I said at the start, that I'm more spiritual, I know more, um, more and better people. It's not about that. In Christ, we are all righteous together. We're either in Christ or not, righteous or not. We're either Satan or sinners. Spiritual authority flows not from titles and positions, but from a life that is genuine and that it follows Jesus. This is the secret to overcoming um, continual sin or a sinful habit. Quit trying to do it by law and regulations, but do it in Christ's strength and Christ's righteousness. In Colossians 3 at the start, it talks about set your heart on things about. Don't live in such a way that you have to be ruled by the things of this life. Take away fretting over this life. Yeah, for those who know me and know me well, they, you'll know that I am a fretter. I probably, if, if there was an Olympics um, competition for fretting, I'll be up there and they'll be playing God Save the Queen because I'll be standing on the, on the first pedestal. Trust me on that. I fret and um, I often read in the Bible about um, scripture, like don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow worry about itself. But Kath will tell you that I'm, I'm one of the best threaters. But God is, is helping me with that. Christ is in our life. And his resurrection life begins now, not just in the future. It starts when we decide that God is going to be part of our, our life. Because we're alive in Christ and, and dead in sin. So I think that's about it. I know it's a bit short and sweet today. I'm sure some of you will be cheering. Um, some of you may not, I don't know, but um, I, I wanted to keep it short and brief today and just going to end in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who has made the ultimate sacrifice for us and given us the ultimate gift. We thank you that we can't be righteous due to what we do or what we say or what we've done but it can only become true what you have done for us, that you, the ultimate sacrifice you've made. So we thank you for that, Lord. And we just pray that over the next few days and weeks, Lord, we will focus on that. We will focus on um, what you've done for us on the cross and what it means for us and what it means for us continually, Lord. We just pray that we can be, um, we can live a righteous life to the best of our abilities. But when things aren't going so well, Lord, that we don't turn to things that are the wrong source, but we turn to you and we seek your guidance and your path, Lord, for we know 
you are a great God, amazing God, who has an amazing future for each one of us. Amen. Thank you, Andrew. Amen. Amen. We were laughing at you. We're not laughing at you. <laughs> we're laughing, laughing with, with you. With you. <laughs> we promise. Don't worry, Cass. Cass always laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Father, that we can uh, we can boast in that, that we don't have to boast in our own righteousness, which would <laughs> not make the cat walk, um, but we can say with confidence we'd rest in you and that we look awesome. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you for the righteousness that, as Andy T said, is a gift that's so amazing. Uh, and, yeah, like there's, there's not a lot of great news around at the moment, but that is absolutely awesome, epic, wonderful news. 
So help us to be reminded of your righteousness when we are having a bad day and need to know something good. Because there's never a season, there's never a time in which being reminded of your righteousness is not awesome. Thank you so much, John and Heather. Thank you, Andrew. Really enjoyed that. We're, um, we're going to have a bit of a time just us now. So for those who are watching online, we just want to say goodbye. I hope that really blessed you. And uh, feel free to come and join us on Zoom sometime <laughs> and be part of the secret bit that you don't get to see. <laughs> we all get to enjoy. Hey! So anyway, God bless you and uh, see you soon. Bye. Bye.